Hey guys, it's Baron Caitlin again. This week we're going to go over our time in the Keys in Isla Morada and also in the Everglades. Now this is part two of our three days in South Florida. If you missed part one, go back and watch it now. This was a really great trip. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. Our next recommendation in our three days in South Florida trip is to go to Isla Morada, which was about a few islands south of John Pennycamp State Park in Key Largo. On our drive there, we saw a lot of really pretty water, which definitely made me want to find a good place to go swimming. So we were in search of a really great beach while we were in Isla Morada, and we found Anne's Beach on Google, which was described as paradise on earth. Hey guys, we're here at Anne's Beach, and this is about 40 minutes south of Penny Camp, and people describe it as paradise. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. From what I see, you know, it's a nice little beach, and the different colors of the water is really nice. But, you know, coming from the beaches where we live in the Treasure Coast, it's hard to even call it a beach. But we're here, so we're going to check it out. I must have a very different definition of paradise. <laughs> no shade to the Keys. The beaches there are very different from the beaches that I'm used to growing up on the east coast of South Florida. Yeah, it was kind of scary. There was signs warning us about crocodiles everywhere. Um, you know, I already worry about sharks when I'm at the beach, so to have to worry about crocodiles felt like a lot. And the sand was just kind of scary and muddy looking. Um, but I think Brendan liked it. Yeah, it, it wasn't too bad. Um, there was the different colors of the water, you know, the different depths, and that was pretty to see. And that little sandbar almost that you could walk like a half a mile out, that was kind of cool. So here at Ann's Beach, the nicest beach access that is remotely like a beach is the second to last entrance when you're heading south. And there's a little like guard tower there. Um, and it's really kind of cool, but uh, not what I would call paradise. <laughs> And after swimming around for a while, I was really feeling that island vibe and wanted to continue it. And one thing I like to do when I go on vacation is to find the best breweries in the area. We're here in Isla Morada, and uh, we saw this really cute looking brewery, the Florida Keys Brewing Company. And, uh, didn't really do any research on it, don't know what to expect, but we're gonna come in here, try a couple of beers, and uh, tell you guys what we think. How you feeling, you excited? This is in fact kind of a beer. Uh, this is what they call the Meow Garita, and it was a Cico de Mayo specialty. So it's got a nice blonde, it's got mezcal infused peppers, and it also has honey. Uh, so it's kind of a it's kind of a twist on the traditional margarita, and it man, it's really good. Mm. It's got just the perfect amount of hops in it. It's got the little bit of spice from the peppers and then the sweetness and the honey. It's just perfect combination. So if you are 
coming anytime near Cinco de Mayo and they have the Miaugarita, highly recommend. We spent a little time there, listened to some live music for a bit, and then I wanted to go up the road a few miles to another brewery that I read about I was especially excited for. In Fort Pierce where I work, there's also an Ila Morada brewing company, and I imagine that the one in Ila Morada here is probably the original, um, but I think they're both pretty nice. Uh, this is really cool, of course. Had to get a Keys inspired drink, so I got a coconut key lime pie blonde ale. It's nice. You know, it's got a little bit of lime. I actually kind of wish I had a little bit more key lime and a little less coconut, but overall, pretty good drink. And uh, Caitlin, she got a raspberry summer ale. What do you think about it? Pretty good. I'm probably not one for beer, but yeah. Pretty good. Nice. And since we're in the Keys, obviously we have to try key lime pie. Um, I've had key lime pie before. Love key lime pie. This one here, I've never had key lime pie, so we definitely needed to rectify that situation. So uh, we looked online. Um, there were a couple of bakeries. Uh, but there was one place that was called the Key Lime Lady, um, and it was really interesting. Honestly, it was inside of like a convenience store in a cooler, like where you would find ice cream, and uh, it's homemade. The lady must just bring it every day and sells it right through the grocery store, and uh, that was pretty cool. What did you think of it? It was really cool to support, I guess, a business that you know was a local business. That's always really fun, but it was delicious. It was so, so good. <laughs> it was really good. One thing I will recommend is to bring metal spoons because it was frozen in the little dinky plastic spoons they give you. It was very difficult to try to get out, uh, but once you did, it was so good. I love key lime pie. Mm, how Tastes is it? good to me. Very limey. Nice. Very piey. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Mmm. If you've never had key limes before or key lime pie, you definitely need to have it. The amount of sour and sweetness to it, it just like almost doesn't taste like a lime. And it's just a really good key lime pie. Absolutely recommend it. At least the plastic spoons forced us to savor it. Mm -hmm. Because we were quite ravenous at this point, <laughs> we were really hungry. So if we had metal spoons, I think we would have eaten it in like five minutes. Gotcha. Versus the 15 minutes that it took to scrape it up with the plastic <laughs> spoon. On our way back to our hotel, we found a nice little bar by the water and watched the sunset. And we needed to get back to our hotel so that we could get a good night's sleep and be prepared for Everglades National Park the next day. You can't go to South Florida without going to Everglades National Park. This 1.5 million acres of land is amazing. They have such awesome wildlife, which is perfect for reptile lovers and birding enthusiasts alike. The one thing I will say is make sure that you have some insect repellent because the bugs can be nasty here. But definitely need to check it out. Super fun, really excited to go see it. And uh, later on, we're actually gonna do an airboat ride. So. Hopefully we'll see some alligators, maybe even an American crocodile. So stay tuned for that. We knew we wanted to go on a hike and see some gators, but we didn't have a lot of time. So we went into the education center first. Walked in there, saw the cool exhibits that are around there, and then got some information about the hikes so that we can make a decision on which hike was best for us. So when we went to the Everglades, we were kind of limited on time, um, given that we were going to be going on an airboat ride that day and driving back home. So we decided to do the Anhinga Trail, 
which was really fun. I think two minutes in, we saw our first alligator, which was really exciting. If you don't know, I love alligators and reptiles in general. So that was super cool. I thought the nature was really beautiful. Um, maybe not to everyone, but it's very beautiful to me. Um, it's beautiful to me too. <laughs> It was a nice little 45 minute easy ADA accessible trail and we saw a couple of alligators, some Antinga birds, which are just really awesome birds and also the namesake of the trail, so glad we got to see those. Um, we also saw a bunch of gar and some other kinds of fish and we both really loved the lilies that were on the water. But one thing I will say is definitely remember to pack bottled water um, because though it's kind of short, you are in the sun a lot and you could get dehydrated if you're not careful. And I wish we had more time to do more of the hikes and go further down south and maybe see some of the crocodiles and the roseate spoonbills. Um, so we are definitely gonna have to go back sometime soon. So stay tuned for that. The last thing you need to do when you're in the Everglades is take an airboat ride. Um, airboats are not normally like in the main part of the upper glades, you have to go kind of the outskirts area. So we were up on like the northern border, um, but uh, I'll put the, the name of the airboat place right here. One thing I was surprised about is even though it was quite busy when we got there, we really didn't have to wait very long before they sent us over to our tour and we were boarding our boat and getting ready for our journey. It was our first time ever doing an airboat. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed it, honestly. I, I loved when they were going fast and taking the, the fast corners because there's like no turn radius. So you're kind of drifting along the water. It's a really great time. We didn't see as many alligators, but that really wasn't surprising, right? No, it was really loud. And you want alligators to hide when there's people around and when there's loud noises. So we didn't see a whole lot of them. But it was like a roller coaster, so who cares? I didn't have time to be looking for alligators. I was too busy flying around on an airboat. <laughs> Honestly, I was really scared at first. Um, the first five minutes, I was terrified. I was like, what if the water is really shallow and we get stuck? But the um, airboat driver explained that airboats can glide across very shallow water mm -hmm. and kind of um, talked about how airboats work and that made me feel a lot better. So I was grateful for that. Overall, it was a lot of fun. It's kind of like a roller coaster in some parts of it because the way it turns, but that was a lot of fun, yeah. I highly recommend doing it. I hope you enjoyed our series on things to do when you have three days in South Florida. Um, it was a lot of fun. We got to see a lot of fun things, experience some new things, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, I will say one caveat to that. If you have more time or money, um, definitely go down further south to like Marathon, and Key West for like real keys and get the full keys experience. Um, we didn't have the time or necessarily the money to stay in the Keys because it's really expensive. Um, so we ended up staying in Homestead, which is right outside the Keys. And that's my recommendation for you, kind of like a budget hack. Um, it's like three times cheaper <laughs> to get a place in Homestead and then make the quick drive down to the uh, northern islands of the Keys. And uh, it's right there at uh, the Everglades too. Um, so I hope you guys find yourself in the Keys real soon. And as always, find, find yourself, yourself on, on the, the journey. journey.